Welcome back to the underground here. We are uh, here on December 2nd, 2021 with uh, Jenny Porter, who just finished up a great set of much, uh, mostly original music, but also some covers as well. And I uh, wanted to catch up with her and find out what is what is going on in the world of music and the world of Jenny Porter. We talked about maybe doing this uh, Zach Galifianakis uh, between two ferns style because we're going to have a little conversation about performance anxiety because I get that too, but not, well, that has many, that's a multi-layered uh, <laughs> term, but I'm talking about music uh, for the purposes of this show. Jenny, welcome. Thanks, and thank Jamie. you so much for being here. That was a great performance. We really enjoyed it. Thank you. Yeah. I'm super happy to be here. <laughs> right on. So all the way from uh, from Rutland, but via Belmont. Yeah, so I live in Rutland now, but um, grew up in Belmont, Vermont, which is the backside of Okemo Mountain, for those who don't know. Mm-hmm. Excellent. I never think of it that way. I like you yeah, uh, the valley mentioning behind that. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right on. So, yeah, I was close with Wallingford, but uh, mm-hmm. Shrewsbury is also there, the home of Jim Jeffords. He was a, a representative, blah, 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 uh, back in the day. How did you start into music? Um, well, when I was younger, I was obsessed with musicals. Like, I, I, my entire dream for my, for my entire childhood was be on Broadway, but then it turns out that uh, New York, the city is a little much for me, a little too many people, you know, mm-hmm. but, um, so yeah, I really started with musicals and then I, I got into high school and I joined a choir. So I was kind of like the dorkiest music person ever. And then, uh, I, uh, met the, the, my musical mentor, Tony, and he started like Tony Lee Thomas. Tony Lee Thomas. Yep. Right. And we started doing, started playing with him. And uh, he introduced me into all kinds of music and kind of this style of singer songwriter stuff. And then I just ran with that. And um, yeah, that's that. So went from musicals and kind of dorkiness into covering cheesy, dorky songs. You know, it's, it's great. It's great. <laughs> well, is it, it's good to always have a dork continu- continuum. Oh, yeah. I can't, you, that part I can't help. I, yeah. I, I try. And well, just... most of us, I think. I mean, most musicians <laughs> in general, secretly, I mean, rock stars, yeah. secretly dorks. Oh, I know. And nerds, too. Think about it. If you're going to like sit down and be that good at an instrument or like that talented or that stuff, you have to sit down in your basement and do those scales instead of being out being cool with your friends you know right 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 yeah. the, the armchair or the, the 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 quarterback the high school quarterback is usually not uh later in life not really doing as much maybe. oh, yeah. Uh, oh or, yeah or the or the or the cool the cool kid exactly exactly um, um uh so you started uh performing um in musicals and then um how did you segue into playing guitars and writing songs? Was it as you, you mentioned your mentors, Tony Lee Thomas, did you start writing songs as a young person thinking about musicals? Where did you meet him? Um, I actually met him in Belmont at a, at a party. My dad has this like kind of like local Belmont family band that my friend Marianne who's watching. Hey, Marianne, she plays bass with him and, uh, they, uh, I came home from college and was not quite sure what I wanted to do with my life. And they were playing a little local local show in town, opening up for Tony. And so my dad said, oh, you want to come sing a few songs? And I said, sure. So I went and uh, joined them at this little pig roast. And Tony, after my set, asked me if I wanted to play any songs with them. And I said, I don't know any songs in my anxiety way and he said well you you just sang for like an hour on stage you at least know a few and, and then we ended up singing leaving on a jet plane mm-hmm. which was the tune we chose and then after that he uh asked if i wanted to go on out to like nantucket and block island and then to pittsfield mass where he was from so we did a little tour and uh that went really well and then i just started playing with him so the the segue was just pretty pretty just kind of fell into place, you wow. know, it was, I was very serendipitous, very lucky, you know what I mean? And then he, uh, you, I play a lot in Killington, Vermont. So he, uh, he would do the summers out on the Island and then the winters in Killington. And so I, I followed along on that and then he got, he got me my first solo gig. And then from there I just started, and he also taught me how to play guitar. So 
between those two things, we I just started playing out more. And then, uh, yeah, the, the writing original songs. I guess I've been writing original songs since I was younger, but, oh, were they cheesy when they were young? You know, I still have them. It's a little frightening because some of them I read and I'm like, oh, dear God, I still have some of the same thoughts. You know what I mean? <laughs> and it's like, oh, Jenny, got to break those patterns, you know? But a lot of them are just sweet um, seven-year-old things that you that you know your big world scape i was really into um into baseball at the time or sports at the time so i had one all about baseball about how like the bases are loaded i don't know what to do three balls and two strikes you know what i mean it was really dramatic but um but i didn't seriously start writing songs till i picked up the guitar and yeah Right. I don't know. Well, there, you know, there's there's room for. Uh, I think the Neil Diamond uh, Sweet Caroline is due for a reboot. You know, yeah. for the Red Sox. So if you've got any of those, dust them off. Yeah, I, I'll, bring I'll them try back, that. and you know, maybe yeah. that's on the next album. You should have a baseball song. I should have a baseball song. Well, I mean, if that's where they were starting, you know. I don't know. It was like also about like being in court and being on like death row, which is really dark for like a eight year old. Wow. But. <laughs> I don't know. I I don't. I had a really great upbringing. I don't know where that came from. But sounds like it needs to come back. Yeah. yeah. Huh. It was with my friend Farron Barella, and our band was called Here Be Dragons. Yes. Yep. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. I feel like that came from something else. Uh, I have no idea. Here be dragons, right? What What are we thinking of? Oh, there's a. There's another. Uh, there's something I'm thinking of, but anyway. Yeah, we probably ripped it off. Yeah. Well, or you were the pioneer. Uh-huh. Could be. Yeah. I'm gonna go with that. <laughs> um, you um, you talked about '90s influences and in '90s female artists and played a couple great. Um, what Alanis Morissette and uh, Indigo Girls, mm-hmm. and uh, Amanda Palmer, who. Mm-hmm. Uh, is so relevant, so great, so strong. Do you now. know her? I do. I love oh, Amanda yay. Palmer. Yeah, oh, no. Amanda Palmer is amazing. I, I saw I her a couple s- years ago. Oh, lucky. But the, there is She's no so intermission tour. Oh, her, isn't that album amazing? The, the Mother's Confession song. I can't listen to it without crying. So good. Yeah, yeah. And and I think that's why I probably segue to that, because you said you, as a seven or eight-year-old, you wrote about Death Row, and she writes about very... Very uh, serious, trenchant social issues, does it in a way that is accessible, mm-hmm. poetic, and really, really um, musical. Well, my, my song was not poetic and very beautiful at that age, but, you know, <laughs> but anyways. But, uh, yeah, she's a bit, been a big influence on me. Um, and Ani DeFranco, if mm-hmm. you know her, she's another hero of mine. Yeah, I just really like um, empowered females that write stuff. It's just I'm really drawn to them. And I, yeah, and it just seemed like that 90s crew really broke some of the molds, you know, and really started saying what they want. Like, Ani DeFranco's amazing. She was writing tunes that were so, um, they they weren't quite a, a, a maybe like approachable or weren't quite what everyone wanted to hear because they were, they did talk about a lot of things that were a little too much or a little too real or honest. And uh, Mm -hmm. so they wouldn't play her stuff on the radios. And they, and so she started her own record label called Righteous Babe Records. Like, come on, how cool is that? And so that's a dream of mine to record with Righteous Babe Records. Absolutely. And um, yeah, well, you you maybe bring back that, uh, that, that tune that, Maybe it wasn't all that you wanted. I'm going to go back to it. Because, <laughs> this song is, I, that was just know. a joke saying that. I, yeah. Any size it it's just funny that, it's funny that you brought it up. <laughs> I, I, I tend to, to love Ani DeFranco and yeah. Amanda Palmer and their have great taste. spirit and their, and their um, tenacity. Righteous yep. babe, right? Yep. Um, our own uh, Vermont's own uh, Anais Mitchell, of course. She's amazing. I just got into her also. like two weeks ago. Right. I'm, I'm absolutely in love. Her songs are so wonderful. Well, so wanting to be on Broadway, mm-hmm. um, and then of course she, uh, you know, her her play, you know, two years ago that she's been workshopping for, I think about seventeen, eighteen years, finally made it on a Broadway two years ago, mm-hmm. and won everything. Yeah, right before COVID. Yeah, I, I've I've listened to it. It's really wonderful. Yeah, so um, so there's you know all of your interests can maybe mm-hmm. follow follow a similar path. Yeah, yeah. And righteous babe, you've got a connection here in Vermont. Yeah. I don't know. I just saw 
uh, Anais uh, said she moved out of Brooklyn, I think. So I don't know where she's moved to, if she's moved back here. But she's a native, so if she's back... I didn't know that. That's great. Yeah, she's super cool. Um, I don't know her personally. Um, I did my fan, super fan thing mm -hmm. when I saw her in Montpelier once. And cool. I've seen her live a couple times, and she's great. But uh, um, yeah, great, great taste there. So what do you think with the 90s really... Uh, do you see that... Let me, let me try to figure out a way to phrase it. That generation of female songwriters were so strong, do you think that there are some emerging today? Oh, of course. I mean, I just think that the, it, there's just so much music now and it's everyone can record something at this point. So I feel like it's harder to weed through the, um, to find the great stuff. But of course, there's, there's awesome artists coming out today. Um, yeah. Uh, what drives you about the 90s artists? I don't know. They're just so righteous. <laughs> uh, I, I, I don't know. I, so I really get, I love the Indigo Girls because I love harmonies. Yes. You know, and, and also if you amazing. listen to Indigo Girls tunes, they have kind of a theatrical way of them building. They start with like the song and then they build to the cool chorus and then they have their next verse and then the chorus and then the bridge is so dramatic and over the top and it's, it's exactly what I, it's like a musical in one song. So, and then plus the harmonies, I just love that. And this is going to sound weird, but there's something that I find really off-putting about um, some female musicians is that they really sexualize their stage performance and their music, which I don't have any like blame for because I think it's really natural to want to do that. And I think it does work and a lot of people pressure musicians to do that. Yep. So I, there's yep. no judgment, but there's something about like the women, like, Indigo Girls, Ani, uh, Amanda, that that don't do that. You know, right, the Indigo right. Girls go out on a T-shirt, but they're just so good that they can be, they can have platinum records. You know right. what I mean? Like I, so that's also inspirational. Is like at that time, I feel like women were able to not have to be as sexualized. You know? Yeah, so, absolutely. Um, I think that's cool. Yeah, center down on the music. Um, yeah. There's a there's a line in the one of the last songs you played. Um, Sexuality is not a currency, mm -hmm. right? Uh, from the uh, swine, uh, yep. what, what's prime the name time. of it? It's, uh, prime time, uh, sorry, snake, snake oil, oil, prime, prime time, time swindlers. swindlers. Yep. Uh, by the way, just to because I'm holding it and you're wondering what it is, and we need to zero down on this, and we will again at the end. But uh, this is Jenny's new album, Into the Wave. She played several songs from it uh, tonight, but uh, the one we're talking about right now is called Snake Oil Prime Time Swindlers. Mm -hmm. And it has that great line, sexuality is not a currency, which I really yeah. appreciated. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So, um, yeah. <laughs> and that's basically what all those artists that you just mentioned, mm -hmm. they, hey, let's, uh, eyes up here, guys. Yeah. Eyes up yeah. here. <laughs> um, <laughs> which is, it, then we can talk about your uh, wardrobe malfunction. Oh, I yeah, guess, that was which great. I my did, wardrobe malfunction. Which which none of us here in the studio Apparently the guitar had any was idea. covering my <laughs> dress, but my, of course, the, the one time this happens on stage is when I'm being recorded. But luckily, the, the guitar was covering it, but my shirt did pop open. Right. So mortifying, right. but well, your music classic. on on your originals here obviously did uh, uh, everything that your um, heroes or heroines that you just mentioned do. I mean, it's very strong musically. Good um, songs about friendship. The the I mean, we can talk about the last one too in a minute, but. But the the song you opened was South Carolina, right? And then the um, then you played a, a Tony tune, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then the third song I think was the box. Yes, oh, yeah, well, right? nice, nicely done. Right, um, and about important themes. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, the South Carolina was actually the first song I ever wrote. Um, it started out with GCD, you know, and then. <laughs> Like I was saying earlier, I th threw a B7 in there to mix it up, you know. But uh, yeah, that one was, I, so I went to an all-girls school for high school, which I also think definitely influenced my want to have, like, the female empowerment thing. Actually, an uh, artist that you've had on this show, Julia Rose, went to Emma Willard as well. The high school I went to, we knew each other. I was two grades above her, but... Wait, um, in South Carolina, in Troy? In Troy, New York. Oh, okay. Yep, yep. So, but at that school, I met my best friend, uh... 
Miss Wilpers, and we moved down to South Carolina right after school. Oh, gotcha. So I like to say that we were so socially awkward and just kind of goofballs that I didn't have much else to write about other than our friendship while we were down there. So, um, yeah. And that was cool. She, uh, she listened to the album and she was like, Oh my God, South Carolina. I was like, it's about you. And she, it was kind of cute, you know? Nice. So that was special. You also played safe at home, which was beautiful Thank about, you. uh, really felt like a really good family song in a way. Yeah. Yeah, that was a. Uh, um, yeah, when I first wrote it, I played it for my mom and my dad, uh, just and I, because I just wanted to make sure they were okay with me putting their business in the street. You know what I mean? But uh, they both cried and were like, "Right on point," you know. So <clears throat> yeah, it's it's really interesting. I I I, I don't know how much. I guess I'll. Yeah, so my father is, like, a very powerful, wonderful man, you know, but he definitely has his own demons of not feeling um, adequate and really fights with those, you know. So that was, uh, I was like, he lives in the shadows of unmet expectations and dies in the darkness of his limitations, you know. That was really, and he was like, wow, I think you just nailed me. Thank you for someone sees me, you know? So I was pumped. I was like, oh, thank God. That wasn't too much, you know? And so I really feel like I got a lot of really great things from my father. Like he's saying, and he, played, he plays guitar, and like he's, he's just really, he's good at everything. You know what I mean? Even though he's, he doesn't he think so. He likes to win, you said also. Yes, he does like to win. He has a big problem with yeah. losing. <laughs> um, but yeah, just so that... That kind of part of my personality, I definitely got from him. You know, a lot of a lot of anxiety. You know, but and my mom, I think, is I I, and it's not. It sounds like in the song that she's. I've, I've talked to both my parents about this. This isn't bad to say, but my mom does have like my the side of me that I like the most is the part that reminds me of my mother. My mother, I think, is the most beautiful person who's ever lived. And I think that she just really makes everyone feel comfortable. And she really just is, I don't, I truly don't know a single person who dislikes her because she's just that wonderful. You know what I mean? So like that part about her is just like, like the way her smile makes me smile and you smile. That's how I want to be. You know what I mean? So like that's, so building them together, I think paints the picture of, of what I was trying to say. You know what I mean? And I, so I want to be like my mom, but I definitely feel like I've got a lot of that in that side where I'm feeling let's like the song is describing is definitely my father's side. You know, that's definitely him. He could sing that whole song himself too, you right. know? So, and then, but the way yeah. you sing it maybe kind of, uh, betrays or shows both parents in a way you know, you mentioned anxiety a few times. We've made a joke about it, but who do you? And and the big smile you just you just mentioned your mom. Yeah. So you 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 know you don't really seem anxious at all. You seem so. <laughs> and and so I want to ask: Is the smile because you you're also super infectious with your smile oh, when thanks. you're performing? <laughs> and is that your mom? Who 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 do you get the ability to so adequately mask your anxiety because we don't see it. I th I, th I think that's maybe from both of them. I think the anxiety's from him. I think that happy the non anxieties from my mom. So I'm right in the middle. You know, I'm like I'm anxious, right. but I'm okay. You know right. what I mean? I don't know. Because we're out there like watching you, just all beaming ear to ear too. Because there's no not beaming looking at you. You're you've got this huge <laughs> smile when you perform. Thanks. Well, it's, it's it's my favorite thing to do. I do love singing. It's it's funny. It's like the, even though it does cause me so much anxiety. And like before, oh my god, before the show, I'm like I don't know, guys. I don't know. I'm like I'm pacing back and forth like a nervous dog. You know. What I mean, but um, it's. I think that that also kind of can drive the the music. Sometimes is the anxiety, you know. Like people always say, well, if you weren't, if you're not anxious, you don't care. But I don't think that's quite the same thing. I know some people who aren't anxious that still care very much. But I think for me, I think that like internal hype can um, can. Like, it's not fake when I'm smiling and having fun. You know what I mean? I'm, right. I am anxious. Right. And, like, after, like, I had to stop a few times and, like, oh, man. You know what I mean? And um, so, but I don't know. It drives it a little bit. I like yeah. that. I like that idea. Yeah. 
that's uh yeah it seems like you've got a it may, there's maybe a pattern or a a cycle to it maybe yeah it's a, it, it, yeah i someone once said to me the other day they're like do you like feeling anxious and i was like no why would i like this <laughs> and then i realized like maybe and the, them saying that to me like maybe i have to step back and i was like like this might be a little t- too far, but like it's like in that same way that like like someone cutting themselves or something or is release. Like that anxiety is the way that my body has learned how to deal with that pressure or that like psychological warfare. You know what I mean? Is to go in this pattern of well, I know that this is how I feel when I feel this way, and then I just go there. You know what I mean? Right. But, right. Um, but there's maybe sense? an anticipated sense of relief to come yes or yes. part of the anxiety is the release it's a cycle yeah yeah like yeah exactly yeah, yeah it's fantastic well we like whatever it is it's, <laughs> it's great and you play at killington all the time yeah right so how so where where do you normally play um so i play at um jack's and the foundry and in the winter time i do happy hours at the pickle barrel but yeah, actually, this this winter on Thursdays, I'm going to be doing this thing called Jenny and Friends, and um, some of your artists that have been on your Christian Guthrie will be joining me for a few of Who those. Who plays drums on? Who plays drums on, on the this, album? Right? Yeah. Do you know that actually, Safe at Home, he transformed that song. It was originally like kind of a slower thing, and I think he was. So I laid down my. Um, my scratch tracks for my guitar and my vocals, but I think he was. And Tony came in and played some guitar, but on that one, I, I play guitar, so it was just me and my vocals, and Krishna came in and played the, laid the drum tracks down and made it into this like power ballad that I was like, I had no idea it was a power ballad, and he's like, yeah, it's a power ballad. And I was like, oh my God, thank you. Like, so Krishna really transformed that tune, which I think is really cool. Yeah, who better to uh, transform a song about family than somebody from the best musical family in America. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Know? Yeah. Who's played here. We've been so lucky to have him here too. And he's just yeah, he's a great just, person. Oh, I love him. He's actually, he's marrying my best friend, my childhood best friend. Oh, wow. Yep. Annalisa will, Annalisa star will soon be Annalisa Guthrie. Fantastic. Crazy. Is that happening soon? It is uh, July 2nd of this coming year. Wow. So we'll, we'll uh, be able to, ensnare Krishna Guthrie in Vermont's borders for a long time. It mm-hmm. sounds like a she's know. hometown girl. I mean, yeah. He's not from far away. Yeah, he's from Washington, Mass, I believe. Yeah, yeah, pretty close, but that's so cool. Yeah. So uh, where do we find all of your your music? Well, um, I've got it on Spotify and iTunes, Apple Music, Amazon, and uh, you can now find it on this really cool YouTube site that's called Live from the Underground. And no, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so it's on. It's on most of the um, major, of the major, major channels. Channels. There you go. And locally, we could if people want to buy CDs. Yeah, you can. You can buy them. You can uh, come to shows. I usually have them out, yeah. and they're donation based. So yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Well, it was really a treat to have you here. Oh, we really thank enjoyed you. it. We hope you'll come back. Are you going to talking about harmonies? Uh, do you have a harmonizer that you'll indigo girl out on us with uh, in I, the future? I definitely could. Um, actually, uh, uh, to talk about him again, Tony Lee Thomas is my favorite person to sing with because he his harmony parts are so good. It's like I'm like, how did you do that? Julia is an amazing harmony singer as well. If you Get Julia, to hear. Uh, Julia Rose. Rose. Or, yep, or, Julia Rose. Well, Julia Ryback, but Julia Rose Studios is her her thing. Right. right. I th- recorded an al- recorded her album, or you mixed it. You mixed it. Vincent mixed it, which is just too cool. Can't uh, shout, out to shout out to Julia, <laughs> who's on this badass like country road trip. Ugh, what a cool person. Anyways, um, yeah. So um, and then yeah, and I, I'll harmonize with anyone. <laughs> right on well good yeah. thank you so much for uh for coming in and uh treating us uh so thanks jamie great. absolutely um yeah. here at the underground we also have some merch and uh i won't make vincent move the camera but you can find the uh, merch link on our uh 
uh, I guess right there in the in the uh, screen. Um, very cool um, shirts with a very cool logo. So check that out. <laughs> awesome. Um, as well, and uh, look out for um, look out uh, for Jenny Porter in the future uh, at Killington. Uh, Multiple places right on the access road. Jack's Wobbly Barn, the Foundry. Not the Wobbly Barn. Not the, the Pickle oh, sorry. Barrel. I'm sorry. The, uh, Jack's, the Foundry, <laughs> and... Pickle Barrel. Pickle Barrel. Always <laughs> it's all good. It's up. all good. My, my fault there. Um, and uh, we'll be back here in two weeks uh, in uh, December, June. Boy, it's been, <laughs> it's been a while, folks. December 16th uh, is the Party Crashers. Yeah, with the Party Crashers wow. on December 16th here at the Underground. Uh, and uh, for, funky. yeah, ah. we'll have a funky show on the 16th. And uh, we thank all of you for uh, checking us out here and uh, helping us uh, bring music to the masses. Uh, for December 2nd, for Vincent Freeman and Babs Mills, Kurt, and Jack Jenny guys. Porter, and, uh, and Abby. The wonderful studio dog. Such a, the dog was so cool. Literally was running through the studio and avoiding all the wires, going like through the cameras. It's yeah. a good studio dog. Yeah. You have to, d don't try this at home. You need to like make sure your studio dog has been trained. Yeah. So. It's a lot of expensive gear. It is. For all of us here, thank you so much. And we'll see you next time. Thank you.